Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tell you up uh, my hopper pattern. Brent's hopper. I've used this fly for many years. It's been a very effective fly and uh, quite easy to tie. I'm just going to go over some methods. I do a couple things a little different you might want to keep in mind here. So uh, this one I've got a white body. Uh, the foam underneath here is white. I tie the foam from the bottom up so there's no hook showing on there. My primary goal on that. Now if, if you want to take some markers you can color that white foam to whatever shades you like. You can with it on the hook like that you can also get a kind of a variegated uh, coloration. It works, works quite well to color it later as well. But Today I'm going to uh, tie up one. Let's just tie a, uh, an olive or a green uh, hopper up for you today. Do a little different color. Uh, it'll so we're going to get started here with the materials. I'm going to use a 1710, it's a 2x long size 8 hook. Uh, for the body I'm going to use some foam, some cut foam. These, uh, these have some foam cutters, I just build these all myself. You can buy them already packaged and cut, ready to go. The um, Underwing, I'm going to use some turkey quill. This is kind of a hopper green. We're going to use that. Could make a pretty good cicada too, wouldn't it? And the uh, overwing, I'm going to use, and the bullet head, I'm going to use some nice soft long deer hair. Stack that. And then the legs, we're going to use some barred rubber legs material. Okay. We'll just do a little different color variation there for you. Now, when I start uh, here, I want to put my hook through the foam right at the rear, like so, and put my hook in the vise. The reason I do that, I, I tie this from the bottom up. So many times guys are tying, it's easier to tie the foam from the top down, but then you have the bare hook exposed. I like to have the fish looking at a nice clean fly down there. Looks the other way looks nicer in the shop or whatever, but I'm gonna tie it from the bottom. I'm taking a couple loose turns here and I tighten it up at the back. Okay. And then when I I'm using some six aught tan thread here, I can lean on it pretty good. Now we'll get to the top of the shank again. I'm just gonna run my thread to the next segment and then I can pinch that on like so gives me a nice segment now we get to the top I go to the next segment pinch that in a few good turns next segment a few good turns next segment a few good turns so now you'll see the bottom is Kind of a tapered body. I've narrowed up my segments a little bit, the tension of my materials, and I got a little bit of a taper going there. And I'm buying this down really good and tight. If you're worried about that rolling on you, you can put a little cement up there. I never do it, never, never seems to move much or bother anything. Okay, so if you were doing the natural color, you can just go with some nice turkey quill match your naturals. Do an olive one today just for giggles. I'm going to go in this hopper green color. And this one I've, I've put some flex cement on this turkey quill. So stop it from coming apart on you when you go to cut it and tie it on. Hold its shape. Good flex cement. Now I just cut this at an angle. I'm going to put this over the top of my fly, right to the bend. Oh, I got too much? Yeah, a little bit. I'm a little bit heavy on that, so I'm going to come in here and strip off a little bit on each side. A little too much turkey on there. I want to come out past the foam in the back a little bit, just, just slightly. 
There, that looks better. Cut this butt of that turkey quill off. Really wrap it in good and tight here. I'm going to get a nice base to work on there now. Good solid base. I'm going to come in here with my deer, deer hair. This is good long soft deer hair. Cut that off. Get my fuzzy material out of the bottom, my under fur. And put it in my hair stacker. Line those tips up. Now I come in here with a little opposite hand to what I'm going to be tying it on with. And then I'm going to bring in another pair of scissors. I use for this just a pair of utility scissors and cut that off pretty close to my fingers. So I want my thread right behind the eye on this now catch my bullet head. And what I'm going to do is go underneath. I'm going at a perpendicular to the shank right now. And I'm just going to come through with my thread just so I can capture that those butts just really close to the end of those butts. A couple turns. And now it should flare nicely. There won't be a lot of that butt showing through. You can tighten that down. We're using 6 odd thread. Just snug. You don't want any of those butts coming up. Well, you again, okay. And we just, here's a little bullet head tool. Let's come in a pack of three different sizes. There's just a little rubber washer in there with different size holes. Very inexpensive little tool. Make a great bullet head. And uh, there we go. That'll push it on really nice and snug. And you can, there we go. I like that. Bullet hoppers or bullet heads are quite a way to, I like, I like using bullet heads. And if there's any stragglers on the bottom, good time to get them off is right now. There. You know, if you want to use a natural colored leg, let's do that. We can go in with yellow. Nothing wrong with that either. I'll try one of those. Just take one of mine and I'll just split that right down the middle. When I tie it on I'm just going to make the front shorter. A couple loose turns here. Grab the leg on the outside near me and then I'll tie it down. Those rubber legs, kind of the medium size is what I use and then get some really nice action. They, they kick along pretty good. If you figure that's a little long, you can trim them off, but I'm not too worried about the legs, but they really, really kick good. So there's a, a green hopper. You can do yellow, you can do whatever color you want. You can use your markers, color your white ones. That's what I do a lot of times, just tie them up in white. You know, just have a box of the white ones here with you, and then you take a felt marker or two, you can, some browns or yellows, whatever, green, whatever you want color it right on the water if you want. But it's a really nice little pattern. The, um, it's been very effective. It's a fly that sits really low in the water like a hopper does. Don't like it floating too high. It kicks really well. So the main thing when I'm fishing hopper patterns is I, I stop my rod tip really high when I'm casting. I get a abrupt stop. I want that fly to splat on the water. Make some noise. I cast it well ahead of a fish so he's got time to come to it. And I'll just keep my rod tip out of the water. I, I, I twitch the fly with the tip of my rod. And this fly here is produces huge fish. And the fall when the hoppers are out, that is a great time to fish. I get really excited when it's hopper season and the fish do too. So all the best for this one and hope to see you in the water. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.